ministry. The benefit is you, you reach folks, then Uncle Sam moves them. But just uh, last week, we had uh, someone that uh, had been with us for a while. Uncle Sam moved him to Little Rock, Arkansas, but he took some leave and came over and visited with us last week. So that's uh, that's always refreshing when somebody comes back and acknowledges the church. Um, but then the same week, we lose two Marines that get uh, sent back to the States. And so it's a constant revolving door with the military side. Yeah, I bet you that's hard. It is. You know, when you lose people, um, I, it's never easy, but at least uh, we understand why they're moving. It's because uh, Uncle Sam moves them. So we really have nothing to do with that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, how's your uh, family doing and everything? They're doing real well. Michaela graduated from nursing school, so she's working on her uh, I guess they call it the NCLEX or whatever the nursing uh, test is. Um, Bailey just started back um, school this week. She homeschools, um, but uh, they're they're doing fine and just uh, moving right along. Sherry works so hard at uh, working with our young people in the church. Plus, she cooks every Sunday because any um, single military person that comes to church, we have them over on Sunday for. Uh, for dinner so sherry cooks every week so she stays pretty busy with all that hey man we're gonna start doing that too for any single military visitor that visits here we're gonna start that so there you go <laughs> well good brother barnes is there uh you know anything we can pray about how's the church doing you know everybody just without the revolving door just seems to be doing pretty good yes sir you know uh, the, the interesting thing is we've had a, a Filipino lady visit. We have a Japanese lady visiting. We have a, a lady from uh, Yap that's visiting and a, a lady from Chuk. So you get a lot of diversity. Um, and so these are the last four you know, visitors over the last two weeks. So they're from different areas. Um, so I do like that. Uh, our biggest prayer request is property. Uh, we're still in the storefront. We've got it maxed out. Uh, we have our children's classes outside underneath the canopy. Um, but, you know, being in a tropical environment, that's fine. It works out okay. Um, but uh, we're trying to find some lease property. People over here don't want to sell their property, and I understand that. They want to keep it in the family name. So we are seeking a 50 to 75-year lease on a piece of property so we can build a building. So that's our, our prayer request, and that's what we're looking for. Okay. Well, we can definitely pray for that. And then, um, is there any personal prayer requests for your family? Anything we can uh, pray about helping with or anything you guys need right now? No, sir. Everything's good. Just pray. My wife will keep putting up with me. So that's a, that's always a big prayer request. And I'm not sure we're quite that good at praying here. Um, but we will definitely do that. My wife keeps putting up with me and, uh, yeah. I, I'm trying to tell her she needs to pray that I keep putting up with her. Well, I, I wasn't going to say that. She's in the other room, so I better be, uh, you know, yeah. I'm going to keep it quiet. But no, really, the Lord's been really good to us meeting our needs. The, the big prayer request is property for the church and that uh, we can keep reaching folks. You know, that's our responsibility to go out and tell the world. And we just pray that folks will keep getting saved. By the way, we did we did start a church over in Manila, Philippines, um, a couple of years ago, um, a fellow that we had helped uh, train and get ready. And so we went over there, helped start that. That church is doing fine. Keep them in your prayers. And we've actually got another place here on the island uh, pinpointed to start another church. And um, that's just down the road. And we, we certainly uh, are praying about that as well. Yes, sir. So you send somebody out. Are you going to try to be mobile and well, back and forth? We've got, we got a guy that's already connected with uh, a young man that should be over here within 12 months. And uh, we've been in contact with him for the last 12 months, working with him. And uh, we're hoping he'll get over here, and then we're going to uh, use him to start this church about, oh, it's probably 30 minutes from here. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll definitely pray, Brother Barnes, and we sure appreciate you. And one of these days, I know this, I, I know I would love to go to Guam. Yes, uh, sir. I grew up with a lot of Guamanians in Northern Cal. Uh, yes, sir. And, uh, and they're they're good folks, and I know that uh, they need the Lord. And that military thing's got to be tricky. I know of several well, yes. people. And, and we've got we've got four thousand Marines moving in. The advanced ones are here. In fact, we had two of them in our church. They just shipped out a couple of weeks ago, and uh, so they're trickling in. But the the 
the large majority of them, it'll be about a year and a half or two years before they're over here. We actually have a man coming in in December, a friend of mine, um, that's going to help us start a solely just a, a military ministry to get them over on Fridays and Saturdays and then get them in church on Sunday. That's something else to pray about. Hopefully that'll begin in December. Yes, sir. So are you getting an influx of Marines now? You got a bunch that are moving there now, or is that always we got, Well, we got 4,000 that are headed this way. The base is still under construction. Uh, they're, they're relocating from Okinawa, okay. uh, Japan, and they're, they're coming over here. So we'll have Air Force, Marines, Navy, and we do have a contingent of the Army THAAD unit, unit here. There's about 150 of them. So we'll have all branches of the military service represented here, including the Coast Guard, which has a large contingent here as well. Amen. Well, good. Well, that's quite the ministry, Brother Barnes. We're excited to be, you know, we just have a small part, but we sure love you. And uh, I think about you often and yes, I, I see the prayer letters and I'm, I'm very thankful that we get to be behind it. Uh, and so if you need anything, please don't don't uh, fail to call me or ask or we, we want to at least pray. We may not be able to do anything, but we might be able to do something. We'll sure try to do something. Uh, we can at least pray, and then we'll try to do what we can do to to help you, because you're kind of representing us too, and in, uh, in the, the ministering to the saints, and we want to be a part of that, and just like the Bible would have us to be, and so uh, we love you, and uh, well, thank you, thank you for your support, thank you for your prayers, thank you for letting us partner with you and your church, and some dear people there appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank yes, you. sir, Brother Barnes. We love you. We're going to go ahead and get off, and then we're going to have a word of prayer for you, and we appreciate you. Please stay in touch. Okay, buddy? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, yes, buddy. Sir. We love you, man. Take right. care. Yes, sir. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Let's go ahead and pray for the Barnes family. I love Brother Barnes. I've known him for quite some time. He was in Walls, Mississippi. He was the second man for a, a pastor named Ronald Westmoreland, and he was a great, great assistant pastor, and then God called him to the mission field. And if you remember years ago, they would bring groups up here from Mississippi to help work on the buildings and stuff, and then uh, I'm glad we get to be behind Brother Barnes, and, and we still remember him preaching that that message here. Par, was it Parbar? Parbar. Remember that message? 